Following the consistent uptick in banditry, kidnapping and various forms of violence across the country, calls have been made from several quarters for government to consider the establishment of another level of the police force in the states. Those pushing for this as a solution say such a move would likely bring law enforcement closer to the people and make things more difficult for non-state actors and other purveyors of violence to operate. We are now being joined by Senator Shehusani, a former lawmaker and human rights activist. We also intend to touch on protest over high cost of living, what the government needs to do, debate on call for return to parliamentary system, and of course, the state of the nation. Senator, thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday. Thank you for having me. Now, you, I know that you've stated it's that you will not support state police, but then the bill on state police has passed second reading. And of course, they made efforts to check me the excesses of state governors, you know, by involving the Federal Police Service Commission and the State Assembly in the appointment and removal of state commissioner of police and in carrying out directives, you know, from the state government. What are your thoughts on this? Are you satisfied with those checks that have been included in the bill? Well, um, first of all, the idea of having a state police stems from the reality of the security challenges we face as a country and as a people in the last uh, uh, over one decade. So those who were uh, advocating for state police believe that if we have a state a police that is under the control of state governments, and that are local, uh, it means that magically all our security problems will be addressed. But I have an issue with that. That is, first of all, um, we have a standing army, we have a standing police force, and we have a civil defense. And these are apparatuses of the state that are located in all crannies and corners of this country. If those experience establish our organs of the state are unable to address the problem. I don't think that a new force um, policing a state will solve that problem. That is firstly. Secondly, state governors as they are in this country, I do not think they have that standing to manage a state police. Um, most of the states are economically distressed. And secondly, we have seen how the governors have managed the state independence electoral commissions, where in most cases the ruling party win all the states. So the danger of having a state police is that you will have a police that is going to be an armed wing of a state ruling party that can be used by the state governor at will and without restraint, and that will target are political opponents of the governor, and that will also be used by the governor to counter federal police each time you have conflict of interest, and people who are called non-indigenous will not be uh, at rest or at peace or at comfort when you have a police control by a state governor. So to me, I think the solutions are very easy. We should equip our armed forces we should fund our armed forces, we should equip our police and civil defense. If we need to recruit more people, we should do it. But there is need for restraint. Our country, our democracy has not reached such a level to which we will say this country is not fragile. We have seen cases where state governors will defy federal government in a lot of respects. But when they now control a police force that they can purchase arms and give, what becomes of the country? Nigeria is a fragile country, and the situation we are in now is such a way that we do everything possible to maintain the unity and stability of this country. Most of these states have vigilantes in their states. Have they been able to tackle the bandits and terrorists that are in that state? No. So to me, I, I think the solutions to Nigeria's security uh, challenges is still having to support, equip, and fund the established agencies which we have and that will be the solution. Not uh, giving uh, police, giving governors the, 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 the right or the legal backing to recruit uh, policemen 
that are mostly going to be members of the ruling party, some thugs of the ruling party in the state will all be part of that police force. And what will become of it? Now, you have governors as chief security officer. When they say they are not chief security officer because they don't control the police, is it not the same police? The commissioner of police takes directives from the governor. The restraint he has is also he has an IG. And that is okay. But when you have a police force under the control of a governor, he's almost like a commander in chief of that state. So I don't think that is uh, the, the way to go about it. We are facing security challenges as a country, and this is the reality of our time, of our era, of our generation. And we should rise up to it. But I don't think state police is the solution. All right, well said. Uh, ours is a nation of multi-dimensional uh, systemic challenges. And some analysts um, believe that the president and his administration are currently overwhelmed. They say uh, embarking on reforms uh, that seemingly were not uh, sufficiently assessed or thought through uh, with consultations without adequate preparation uh, for citizens to adjust to and no clear idea of what um, a final destination of what this uh, uh, reforms should look like. Where exactly should the federal government be focusing their attention on in a situation like this where so many things are dismantling at the same time, not only in Nigeria, but seemingly uh, worldwide? Uh, first of all, we must accept the reality. We, are, we find ourselves where we are as a country today as a result of what we did wrongly in the past, past or what we refuse to do. Buhari has been in the saddle of leadership in this country for eight years. He had all the opportunity to restore peace and order and law in areas that are, being, are facing serious security challenges. But it failed. Trillions of Naira was pumped into defense and security that has not translated to protection and peace in the lives of our people. We have seen cases where service chiefs have, la have overstayed their welcome and their tenure being extended and even heads of other paramilitary agencies and even the IG of police in the past, this was what happened. If the Puhari administration has squarely addressed security challenges, we couldn't have passed. I wonder, the same people that were able to be patient with a government that for eight years could not see that what we are facing today is a direct result of that problem we faced in the past. Now, I can say kidnappings are still going on in the north and there are attacks and arson, terrorists are still launching attacks. But if you put it comparatively, there are improvements and there are progress that have been made. Let us not forget, under Buhari administration, we have had a case where the former Minister of Finance said over 1.3 trillion was allocated. And defense and security is one of the most well-funded uh, budgetary uh, uh, sector as far as Nigerian budget system was concerned. But look at what happened. Kidnappings in schools have now reduced drastically. From Kaduna to Abuja, in the last seven to eight months, it's only one cases of attacks that we have had. It is still going on in Zamfara and Sokoto and, 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 and Katsina State and parts of Kaduna State. But when we look at it comparatively, efforts have been made. And I believe that the current security leadership you have in the army, in the police, and the national security advisor have, are achieving better than the ones which we have had in the past. So I think we should look at it from this point of view. If we think this problem is going to go magically, uh, just within 24 hours or 48 hours. And I think we are simply over expecting uh, solutions to the problem. So to me, I think there is need for improvement. We should expect more from our leaders, but we should also appre ap appreciate the progress that have been achieved in the last uh, few months as far as security. I come from a state where in the last eight years, almost a quarter of that state is being controlled by bandits. Southern Kaduna was attacked every day by bandits in part of Biningwari, Giwa local government, and Igabi local government. Uh, it has almost been a daily attack. Farmers cannot go to their farms. They have to pay levies, fines, and taxes to terrorists. There are cases whereby some villages even invite, invite some terrorists to protect them from some bandits. 
We have had cases of attacks in school. Even in Kaduna State alone, School of Forestry Mechanization was attacked. Students were kidnapped. The parents have to pay over 200 million naira to get their votes out. Uh, uh, Greenfield University in Kaduna State was attacked. Students were kidnapped. 250 million naira was paid as ransom. And then we have Bethel Baptist High School. All in Kaduna, it happened. In Niger, Government Science College Kagara and the Islamic School in Tegida. In, in, Zamfara, in Kebi State, we have Federal Government Girls College Yawuri. In Zamfara, Jengibi, in Katana, Ankara. Now, this was what has happened for eight years. But last few times, few months ago, we have not had schools been attacked. So there should be some level of appreciation while calling for more. And I don't think the issue of uh, state police will actually address the problem. Most governors, when they are in power, they want state police. But by the time they are out of power, they find themselves at the mercy of those who are incumbent. Now they change their views. So we should be very careful. We can address our security challenge. This is a nation of 200 million people. If you put together all the bandits and terrorists in Nigeria, there are no more than 30 to 40,000. We should believe in ourselves that we will overcome this, we will fight this, and the nation will emerge stronger. This is not the only country in the world that has started facing problems of terrorism. Pakistan has faced terrorism for decades and is still fighting. Algeria has faced the same thing. Most of the countries in the Sahel, the Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger Republic, are all facing the same challenges. So we are not alone. But we should find solutions to this problem without necessarily getting into ourselves a situation where the nation will disintegrate. No, thank you very much for that, Senator Shu Sani. Another issue being debated at the moment is the move by lawmakers to end the current presidential system and revert to the parliamentary system. What are your thoughts on this? Well, you see, whatever system that will make this country better, I think, is the best. We have tried parliamentary system as a nation, and it failed. And then we say the best is a democratic system. And now, we are now going back to a parliamentary system. You see, the problem is not the system, it's ourselves. If you are talking of a parliamentary system, it's working in Canada, it's working in Australia, it's working in Britain, and it's working in uh, Kenya. If you are talking of a presidential system, it's working in United States, it's working in Brazil, it's working in Argentina. If you are talking even of monarchy, it's working in Spain, it's working in Netherlands, it's working in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Kuwait. So, the problem is not the system per se, it's ourselves. Maybe when we move forward, we practice this, we say now it's not, we aren't going to go back. So I don't know uh, if going back to parliamentary system will address the problem. But what I know is that whatever system we pick, if we will ensure that democracy uh, is being ruled according to the rules of the game, free, credible election, respect for fundamental rural rights, go, good governance, we will make progress. So it's not about parliamentary, but we need to accept this fact that Nigeria's democracy is very expensive. Uh, we ne don't need a bicameral legislature, the Senate and the House of Reps. The difference between the Senate and House of Reps, first thing is that we do the same job. The difference is that the Senate now confirms political appointees that are sent by the president, but almost everything is the same. We can look at that to cut cost. We can cut cost of governors in a lot of respect. Do we need 36 states? Do we need 36 state House of Assembly? Do we need all these things? Do our, can our resources contain all this? So these are fundamental issues. And I think to solve this problem, we need to go back to the idea of the need to restructure the country. Uh, many governments have come in with promises of restructuring, but at the end of the day, it's been abandoned. So it's almost like campaign slogan that is really abandoned after power. So I, I, I think uh, it's not simply about parliamentary, but uh, we can restructure our country, restructure our democracy in order to make things better and things that can work. Always great to have you on our program here on Arise News, uh, Newsday, uh, Senator Sheh Hussani. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. <laughs>